Maybe the thing you're most scared of is exactly what you should I do. I love what I do still. I have a passion for it. Whatever it was, I, I just tried to dominate it. In a place I've always been trying to get to. I always knew I was going to do something, you know, with my life. Football was just always, I felt like it was always my calling. But you get a chance to write your own story. When you walk around and you're on a practice squad, people look over you. When you walk around and you make all pro twice, people look at you differently. And I think that's, that's, that's motivating to me. Who is that? That's Lil Me, man. How old are you there? Seven. Walter Payton was like one of my favorites, so I picked his number. You look pretty happy there. I am, seven. I don't know, I don't got no bills. Where'd you grow up? I grew up in Albuquerque, New Mexico. There was a lot of drugs in our schools. There was a lot of senseless violence. When you're in a city that doesn't have a lot of things for the youth to do, those kind of things can happen. When I got to my teenage years, you know, I could feel myself doing stupid stuff, and I knew it was stupid, but I still continued to do it. I guess the real turning point for me was when, when I was in Albuquerque, I didn't make the grades to play basketball. And basketball was like one of my favorite things. And so I moved to San Diego, and I was like, that's never gonna be a problem again. Yes! Ah! Yes! It's the whole I take over, baby. Anything that I did, I saw myself being the best ever at it. Whatever it was, I, I just tried to dominate it. What I tell you, not even fair. We used to tell him, you know, if you if you have a goal, write it down, put it on the wall. If you're looking at it every day, it's something that's going to happen. If you pull it down, eventually that's something that's not going to happen because you're you're lying to yourself. I really wanted to be a college athlete. I wanted to play, you know, I wanted to play in the NFL since I was a kid. So you have to go through that system and and. D1 is the best of the best. So, okay, what do I have to do to play Division I college? I gotta get a scholarship. In order to get a scholarship, I gotta play good in, in high school. In order to play good, I gotta be a starter. And then it's just boom, boom, boom. And when you look at it every single day and you break it down like that, it's really simple. But people don't think at it like that. They just look at dreams as being way out there, and they're really not. Your dad's been kicking your ass all day long. And now you finally have the chance to really redeem yourself in the last two holes. What's well, happening? I wouldn't even say he was kicking my ass because, you know, golf is a game of 18 holes. I think as Michael Jordan said, it's not how you start, it's having enough left in you to finish. If you, if you two-putt right here, we tie. <laughs> we win with class over here, you know what I'm saying? Here he is, undrafted. They're taking his dream from him, and he doesn't know how he's gonna be able to take care of his family, and he just hit rock bottom. And it was like, you know what? This is what it is, but let's not let it, you know, let's not let it kill us. Let's let's go ahead and do what we we're supposed to do anyway. After I didn't get drafted, I spent about two, three months with my brother, and I felt a totally different change in my body. I ran different, I felt different, and so I asked him to train me. I think it's just a powerful thing when you get to write your own story. You know what I'm saying? You get to change how people look at you. When you have that prestige, you can change the way people look at things. It's not having a big house or a big, you know, a car and money and whatever. That none of that matters. You can't take it with you, but you can leave it. Your legacy, how you want it. You know, I think if you did that, that's what success is.